Working with dried flowers, there is a, a last thing forever that we as florists, or you as a florist, or the florist that you may become will ultimately yearn for. You know, you want your work to stand the test of time. I want my work to stand the test of time. I love working with fresh flowers because they smell great, they're beautiful, their color is amazing, but I also love to work with dried flowers because there's a permanence to them. If you want to research what flowers are going to dry well versus what aren't, look up like desert flowers, look up drought tolerant plants, and that will likely find you a whole plethora of material for you to work with when wanting to take arrangements, take flowers that were fresh and make them into dried arrangements. Often I actually even buy flowers just with the intention of drying them and turning them into a dried arrangement. One of the things that you're going to want to consider when drying flowers is just the way that it ultimately is going to stay in your arrangement. If I was to dry a flower like this, these are going to be the shapes that I have, right? If I was to turn this upside down, gravity works in my favor and I start getting this long kind of like look about it. And that ultimately, when it's dried out and it takes that sort of shape, is going to mean that instead of it having this droopy look to it, I'm going to have a very vertical looking stem and it's going to look, it's going to look cool. We'll hang it up on the wall and it will be a work of art. So we are going to be building out one side of it and the other side is going to be pretty minimal. Having a table for this is going to be good. Obviously you're, you're not working so much in your hand maybe. You're also not working in a vase so much. Let's see what we got. This is a palm frond that I dried a while ago. Just kind of like compositionally looking, seeing which side works. This guy has this little knob here, so he doesn't want to sit in there, so I'm gonna try it the other way around. And that seems pretty good to me, you know? Now let's try and add this acacia stem to it and see how we feel. We're starting to integrate a little bit of color. I think we can also get in this silver bush right here. I'm gonna lay it down at this point and just sort of see how it looks. This is a really nice stem of dried mango kappa, a eucalyptus. Again, a really cool and somewhat rare stem. Notice how these two stems are kind of like the same. I think I want a little bit of difference out of them, you know? I think I want some level change. I'm gonna pull off a few of these leaves. And that's like compositional, right? We can sort of apply that now and you can see that there's a little bit of a level change from these two pieces. Let's see what else we got here. As cool as it is to, to arrange with dried flowers, sometimes it's best to arrange with fresh flowers knowing that they're going to dry. This stem of King Protea, it's not particularly malleable in its current state, right? I want it to go in here, but you can see how the angle of the stem is pretty tricky and it doesn't have a lot of give to it. And it's true of a few of these stems. So knowing that they're going to dry well and arranging them as a dried arrangement while they're still fresh, can be a super good technique for achieving like the best out of your dried arrangement. That we're doing like with the acacia, we're also doing that with the silver bush and these billy balls, but some of these other stems were not. So I'm actually gonna take this King Protea, which is sort of semi-dry, semi-fresh. You can see it has a bit of a bend to it. So it's just gonna make it a little easier for me to get it in where I want it. I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna slot him in here and I'm gonna ultimately be able to kind of bend his stem a little bit to get him right where I want him. I feel like I just want now something right here. Do we want to find something dry? Do we want to find something that's going to dry well? And we found the perfect stem. This is a pincushion protea. It's on its way to being dry. It's not the freshest, but it's kind of a cool pop of color. Boom, you're kidding. You're kidding. 
We're done. We're gonna wrap this up with some twine. Tuck it under the thumb. Wrap it round and round, right? Because some of these stems are a little fresh, right? And they're gonna dry. With many things that hold water, what happens when they lose water? They shrink, right? So tying them again on the bottom, giving them like a second tie is not gonna be a bad idea. I'm now gonna take a piece of burlap. I've chosen something that's got a little more character, a little less of the bland and like simple burlap here, something that's got some character, that's got some age to it, because this is an art piece, right? This is a forever piece. At this point, I'm just going to grab a little something because we want to tie this up, right? So let's see. Go over your shop, tighten it, get it nice and tight. And then I'm going to put this guy right here. So you see how that's going to create a loop? And you also see how I've got this long old tail right here. From here, I'm going to be able to wrap around. And I'm doing this kind of as tight as I can. The last thing I want is for this to get loose at any point. I'm going to delicately put this right here. And I'm going to tie myself a nice bow. We're going to cut it nice and tight. Triple knot. Cut it tight. Make sure that knot's in. And we might be able to just turn the knot on itself, you know? And that's going to make for a pretty clean little finish there. We've got our loop on the back side and it's going to hang like so. I'm pretty happy with that. I hope you guys like it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.